Joshua Multiversity here on this tired, tired, tired Saturday morning here at New York Comic Con with the one and only Cody Chamberlain. How are you this morning, sir? Very tired, but I'm okay. Very tired. Yeah, us too. So, Sweets came out in trade not a little, uh, not too long ago. Yeah. And how does it feel? Weeks ago. About three weeks ago? Yeah. How does it feel to have your uh, first creator owned project? Uh, first fully creator owned. I did punks with Josh Falkoff. Right. That was a first. And uh, this one's fully creator owned. Right. It's, it's thrilling. You know, you see it, the box shows up and you crack it open and see the first book and you know the first thing you do is flip through it, make sure everything's where it belongs and you know it sort of you sort of ease into enjoying it. So it, it starts with a little bit of stress of are my pages in there? Is there are any printing mistakes? Um, you know, so you comb through once for that and then after you know a week or so you start to ease into okay now I like it it looks good. Kind of develop a bit of a, a fatherhood feeling with the book. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, but you can't help but look at it with a critical eye when it first comes in, and after after time goes by, you can appreciate it a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. So, given that it is your first fully creator-owned work, uh, that there are a lot of implications and a lot of uh, there's a lot of impact for this book to make a big splash. And given the loads of uh, of positive comments on the back cover, uh, the book was very, very well received. And how did that uh, generally? make you feel as a creator? Well, I, I didn't expect bad reviews. I, I, I believed in the book, otherwise I wouldn't have released it. Uh, but I didn't expect as many reviews as I got. Um, I'm, a, I'm a mostly unknown creator. I mean, I've done some stuff, but I'm certainly not a high profile creator. And I'm working in a genre that's not very popular in comics. I'm working in the crime genre. And so I expected that the book would mostly get ignored by reviewers, but it seems like every major news site reviewed it, uh, blogs like crazy. Uh, every podcast did a review on it, so it went really well. And um, I mean, I was I was really excited about it. And it's easily the best best reviewed book I've ever done, which is great. What was one of the what was one of the positive reviews that really just gave you pause? Just like, wow, all right, I did good. Um, well, obviously, the higher profile reviews um, are the ones that excite me the most because for me, it's about trying to generate new readers. Um, so that's where the reviews really helped me. And so Blair Butler did a few pieces on G4, Multiversity, obviously. Uh, iFanboy really got behind the book. Um, you know, so every, anytime it gets reviewed like that, Ain't It Cool did a really nice review. So, I mean, there's been so many of them. And um, some of the pull quotes are, are usable but offensive to other books. You know, they'll compare Sweets and say, Sweets is what this book should have been, and which would have been a great pull quote, but you know, some of those can agitate the industry. But uh, there were some great quotes written that I just couldn't use um, just for agitation reasons. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I thought Multiversity did really well for the book, and you guys even did the, uh, the praline recipe. Yeah. You did the cook-off, so that was cool. The cooking show. <laughs> well, we definitely really, really enjoyed the book. Uh, going into the creative process, like you said, crime books aren't the most popular in comics, but even saying that, there are quite a few of them on the shelves right now. How did you go about structuring suites to really stand out given any other crime book on the shelf? Well, it was important to me to set the book in New Orleans, which is, um, I think New Orleans as a, a crime city is fantastic, uh, but also uh, in comics in general, it's fairly neglected. Um, there's a lot of confusion about Gambit being Cajun, and people in Louisiana know that Cajuns aren't typically from New Orleans. So it's a lot of cliches involving that stuff, and um, typically New Orleans in a comic book is Bourbon Street and Mardi Gras, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's so many cliches with it. So it was important to me to really do a good job with the city, represent the city in a way that um, people in Louisiana could be proud of, and there's so much rich culture in the book that I was able to drop in there, and um, so that was important too. So. So New Orleans being in the subtitle of the book, that wasn't uh, wasn't a coincidence. No, no, it, it absolutely has to be set in New Orleans. If it, once you read the story and you see how it ends up, and there are certain elements of the city that tie into the plot line that are very important. So to try to separate the city from the book is really impossible. So has this been a story that you've been sitting on for a number of years, or is it something that uh, you just said you woke up one day and said, "I want to write a comic. Here's what I want it to be." Uh, I guess what's the the conceptual history of Sweets? Well, I started writing it and I guess I got about three issues done of the first draft. Uh, so that, that was the entire story. So it was only a three issue project at that point. And I just wasn't happy with it. Uh, the writing wasn't up to par. The twist weren't in there that I needed. Um, and even the character was a little bit weak. So I, I put it on the shelf 
uh, my, my career kind of took off on the art side. I did 30 Days a Night with Steve Niles and a bunch of other stuff along the way. And by working with so many good writers, uh, Keith Giffen, Steve Niles, Josh Fialkoff, I was able to just learn a lot about writing comics. And so I, you know, I, I later went back to the script after I had done so much artwork, uh, reworked my script a lot, just beat the hell out of it. And, uh, and it ended up expanding out to about five issues, um, a little bit over. I trimmed out some of the weak stuff and tightened it up, and uh, it's a fun process, you know. But, I mean, it, it's the kind of project where I did have to restart a few times on it um, just because I, the quality wasn't there that I wanted in the project. So I'd rather hold off and do it right than to try to get it out, you know, as a subpar book that wouldn't have a very long shelf life. So how far along the line did uh, Image come in? Um, Image picked up the book just from the pitch. Yeah, but I did a little bit different on the pitch. I, um, in my cover letter, I included a link to download uh, the entire uh, script for the, the full five issues. So that was entirely done. The script was all the way written before I did any of the artwork, really. And so uh, I included that, and they appreciated that. And so my, my pitch was the, just a typical image pitch that you know, they list on the website. Cover, five sample pages, cover letter, um, a one-page outline. And that was pretty much it. But the, the bonus was the script. So thinking about the art, uh, reading the book, it's very obvious that the art, I mean, obviously this comes as a fact of the fact that you wrote and drew it, but the art very well represents the story being told in a very unique way. And I'm just wondering, how do you go about developing the visual aesthetic of the book? Who are some of your influences uh, while drawing it? Well, I didn't pull any, I don't think I pulled any direct influence from any creators. Um, it's really more of just a long-term process of learning and studying. Uh, I mean, obviously there have been a lot of people that have inspired me. Um, but on the limited color palette, it's something I brought in from the design world. I have a graphic design background. And so the start of stripping out colors you don't need um, really, I think, unifies the book. And it's also the reason that black and white crime books work so well. It's a unification of the color scheme. And so I wanted to bring some of that into the book, but not do a black and white book. Yeah. And so uh, color was very important, but the, the sepia tone, the sort of dingy green and brown look to the book came from just being in the city of New Orleans. If you ever visit the town, it's a city that's just battered by weather and humidity, and it's a very old city. And so that shows in the architecture, everything slumps a little bit, and you know, the, any, any fresh coat of paint gets weathered very quickly. And so that was important to reflect in the book. Um, the mosquitoes and the humidity, you can see the spatter throughout. Uh, and then there are a few point of view changes in the story where the color changes. So uh, the killer in the book, it is a murder mystery. When we're, when we're in the killer's point of view, the color drops out completely and it goes to black and white. And there's a flashback sequence of one of the main characters um, that's in a completely different art style and color style. So the, the color scheme on the book itself is very warm and hot and the flashback is very cool. And that was done intentionally as a more innocent time and the, the main core of the murder mystery is very intense and sort of a hot story. So uh, I did my best. At, some of that stuff's very subliminal. or It's, it's just for me or it just implies mood. Um, but people seem to appreciate it and it works for the storyline. So I'm happy with the result. So what is your personal connection to New Orleans? Why are you so drawn to the city? Well, I'm originally from Thibodeau, Louisiana, which uh, your viewers might know as being the home of Swamp Thing, the Thibodeau Homa area uh, where Swamp Thing is set. Um, so that's right outside of New Orleans, about 40 minutes outside. And so we were in the city all the time. There's a lot of connection to the city. But I, for more, more than anything, when, I, when it comes to writing stories, um, you know, I, I like to write what I know, and I know the city. I can, I can write a story set in L.A. or New York, because I, I visit. Obviously, I'm in New York right now. Uh, but I don't really know the city. I don't know the culture. I don't know the food, the people, the dialect. Uh, there are little subtle things that change when you move to cities like that. Um, but since I realized that New Orleans was misrepresented or underrepresented in comics, that was an opportunity to do something there. Um, but it also allows me to use my voice as a creator with my history, um, you know, just being from the region, knowing it pretty well. I, I felt like I could bring something to this story that someone else couldn't, but also the story was very personal to me, and so I was able to do it in a way that only I could do it. And um, let's, let's hope people respond to it and it works. So now that Sweets is wrapped, you're working on uh, re-releasing Punks, the comic. Do you want to speak, uh, speak about that a little bit? Absolutely. Um, we signed on with MTV Geek, 
um, MTV has a line of comics that are coming out, and uh, there are a few books out already. Tony Lee has a book out. There's some good stuff out. And so we're re-releasing the original first two creator-owned issues that Josh and I did, the summer special and the winter special, and we're doing a third issue. Um, and that should get us up to about 100 pages, and hopefully we could do a nice collected hardcover edition. Um, that's my goal for the project. We'll see if that turns out that way. But if the book is a hit and people seem to like it, we'll keep going. Um, but, you know, the, the concept of tying punks in with MTV is amazing. It's a, it's, they have a massive audience, obviously. I think our material speaks to a certain percentage of their audience that would really appreciate it. Uh, mainly punk fans, any one of the graphic, uh, you know, anyone that likes great album covers from that era would also love the artwork. So that's, that's really where the, where the concept came from. But since all the artwork is done traditionally, I don't know if people know that, they oftentimes assume it's Photoshop, but all the artwork is repurposed photocopies, the entire thing. So it's, um, it's, it's copied on my photocopier. I shoot the photos. It's cut out with an X-Acto blade, and it's got tape and glue stick for the whole thing. So uh, only the finished coloring is done digitally. Where did the idea to structure it like uh, an old school punk scene come from? Um, and what was the question again? Where did the um, the idea to structure it like an old school punk zine? Because I flipped through it and it's very yeah. yeah, all the articles and stuff in the yeah. back. That was Josh. That was Josh's idea. Yeah, uh, I was I wasn't really aware of the punk scene um, on the on the zine side because I obviously I grew up in a small town in Louisiana, so I wasn't connected to that. But I, I was fully aware of the album cover. So that was that was where I came in was on the cover side. And uh, you know Josh. He's, a, he's already a huge punk fan. On the music side, I'm more of the aesthetic fan. And so we brought both of those influences in. And, um, you know, he's, he's just got a rich history of the punk movement, and uh, he's a big fan of it. And he, he sort of brought in a lot of stuff that I wasn't aware of. And I brought in Art Chantry, who's the designer I really liked for the interview. And so even the interview in the back, uh, we have two interviews in the back with um, Brian Reed and Rick Remeter. And, um, those are both done in the style of punk, but they're authentic interviews. Yeah. So we did the sock puppet and the goldfish, and uh, so that stuff was just Josh sent. Josh wanted it to be an interview. He sent me the interview, and we had a couple extra months before the book was due. So I, I just illustrated it. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, that seems really just. I hadn't heard of it. I'm flipping through it now. It seems like something that I would really, really enjoy as a fan of uh, of the movement, especially in the '80s. So. Uh, the book is absolutely hysterical. Uh, when I get scripts in, I mean, I'm laughing out loud at the scripts, and um, people really respond to the humor. They they compare it to a million different things that not necessarily any of them were intentional, but um, you know, we get a lot of young ones references to the book, which which Josh says was one of his influences. But I was aware of the young ones, but it certainly didn't come into play on the on the character side. Um, but you know, we take we take all the compliments we can get because I'm I'm a fan of the young ones. So, so other than punks, what uh, what else do you have, Bruin? I'm actually writing three new scripts right now. I'll be drawing at least one of the three and maybe working with some other artists. Uh, we'll kind of have to see how it goes. But um, I'm writing a new crime story that's set in New Orleans. It's not connected to Sweets, but has some of the same elements. And um, I'm also writing a, a horror revenge story and also an action-adventure story set in the 80s. So uh, all three of those are moving along pretty well. And um, hopefully by February of 2012, I can start drawing the first of those three. Well, thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you.